Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Joel Sikia and I ride my motorbike around the Philippines to visit historic churches and learn more about their place in our country's rich history. I've been doing this for two years now and so, for this year's Holy Week Visit a Iglesia special, I decided to show you seven of my favorite historic churches in Luzon that I featured in this channel. Every church I visited is special and has left an indelible mark in me. And so my selection of these seven churches is not based on any type of objective criteria. It is purely subjective and can be based on such personal factors as the general impression I got when I arrived or entered the church, the riding experience to the location, the overall ambiance of the surroundings and the town where it's located, architectural beauty, historical significance and more. And so I'll point this out as we visit each church. There's also no particular order in my presentation, except that we'll start in the north and head downwards to the southern part of the zone. The links to the full feature for each church can be found in the description below. Let's begin our Visita Iglesia journey in Batanes, which is the northernmost tip of the Philippines, and where we find the St. Joseph the Worker Parish Church in Ivana at Batan Island. I especially love the scenic ride to this church because you pass a long coastal road that features some of the most beautiful sceneries in the country. And the majestic entrance itself faces the seashore in a lighthouse. Ivana Church was first established in 1787, but the stone church and convent were built in 1795. The facade was completed in 1854 and its bell tower is unique because it's crenellated and looks like the tower of a castle. A special feature of this church is that it was once the longest church in Batanes, but it was shortened when the population of Ivana decreased owing to the return of several residents to the nearby island of Sabtang in 1844. You can actually see the remains of the old structure at the rear of the church. As a bonus, just across the street is the famous Honesty Store of Batanes where you can purchase any product by simply leaving the payment in a box. For our second church, we proceed to Bantay, Ilocosur to visit the St. Augustine Parish Church, which was established in 1590 and is thus one of the oldest churches in Ilocos. It is also known as the Shrine of Our Lady of Charity because it houses the miraculous image of Virgin Mary as Our Lady of Charity, crowned as patroness of Ilocandia on January 12, 1956. The church was heavily damaged during World War II and was restored starting in 1950 with a neo-Gothic design mixed with pseudo-Romanesque elements. As with several churches, Bantai Church used to be shaped like a cross, but then the sides of the church were no longer restored after World War II, and the right portion was turned into an outdoor chapel called Chapel by the Ruins. Across Bantai Church is the iconic Bantai Bell Tower. This bell tower was built in 1591 and is known as the favorite date spot of Diego and Gabriela Silang the 17th century. It served as the town's watchtower before being turned into a bell tower by nearby Bantai Church in 1857. In fact, Bantai Bell Tower served as a watchtower against pirates during the Spanish colonial era and it gave the locality its name 
because Bantay means guard in English. This was also the location for the Filipino classic movie, Ang Panday. For our third church, we traveled to Tumawini, Isabela Province, which is right below the border of Cagayan Province, to visit San Matias Parish Church. If you're coming from Manila, you can take the long way that cuts through the Sierra Madre mountain range from Belur Quezon. It's a longer route, but you will be rewarded with twisty open roads and scenic mountain views. Tumawini Church is possibly the most unique church I've ever seen. Not just because of the extensive use of ornately designed red bricks, but also because of its bell tower, which was built in 1805 and designed like a wedding cake. It's the only known Spanish colonial era cylindrical tower in the Philippines. The first structure was built of nipa and light materials in 1707 by the Dominicans, and the current structure was built from 1783 to 1805, designed with an ultra-baroque architectural style. It was declared a national cultural treasure by the National Museum of the Philippines, and the National Historical Commission of the Philippines declared it as a National Historical Landmark on February 24, 1989. It has been considered for the UNESCO World Heritage Tentative List since 2006 under the Collective Extension Group of Baroque Churches in the Philippines. The interior of the church is quite modest, but one can easily appreciate the ornately designed red bricks. I tried to enter the belfry when I visited this church, but I was prevented by the bats living inside. So there's a small door here, but it's not locked. You see? Okay. Oh, I could hear all the bats inside. Okay. Mm. Oh, that's a bat. I guess we're not supposed to go there. And it smells really old. Our fourth historic church is the San Guillermo Parish Church in Bacalor, Pampanga. This church was half buried in 1995 by the lahar or volcanic mud flow that resulted from the world's largest volcanic eruption in the last 100 years, namely the June 15, 1991 eruption of Mount Pinatubo. The church was constructed in 1576, but it was destroyed by an earthquake in 1880 and was reconstructed from 1886 to 1897. As you look closely at the church, you will immediately notice that the church is almost half of its original structure and this is made obvious by some telltale signs, like window arcs that are attached to the ground, the church entrance that's not as high as regular main doors, and the low ceiling inside the church and interior windows whose top starts at ground level.
To the right of the church is a museum with really low doorways and chandeliers. In it, you will see a painting that shows the original structure of the church before it was half buried by Lahar. Ah, oh. yeah, yeah, or, or yeah. maybe here, this level, right? No, I think they turned this into the wall. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh! Because you know when you first look at that window there? Yeah. Where you're filming? That was, I think the level was here. Oh, you're right. So, yeah, so it's, it's half. So if this is the, this is the painting of the old church, right? And they say it was half buried by Lahar. So this, this was the main door, it was much larger. And you'd think that the door is so small because in fact, it's just a niche, it's just a window. And this is where it was. It's not the original door. Yes. Right, that's right. So, 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 so the top window is now the door. Okay. Fascinating. Yeah, fascinating. For our fifth historic church, we'll travel to Kalayaan, Laguna Province to visit San Juan Bautista Parish Church in the historic town of Longos by the shores of Laguna Lake. Longos town itself has an interesting history, but we'll focus on its church, which appeared to be slowly falling into ruin at the time I visited it. It was built by Franciscan missionaries in 1669 and it used to have a convent. Unfortunately, nothing's left of the convent but a few remnants and foundation stones. A closer look at the structure will show that the lower part of the church still consists of the original stones, but the upper portion is made of newer stones and concrete hollow blocks. The church also suffered significant damage when Typhoon Milenio hit the Philippines in 2006, but it seems that the parish did not have significant funds to fully restore the church, because even the roof is just made of galvanized iron sheets. Interestingly, the church was abandoned in 1956 and Longos had no parish for almost 40 years. It was only in 1996 that an order decreed its canonical erection as the parish of San Juan Bautista. All taken, I love the subdued and humble ambience of the church. Even the simple and quiet interior of the church easily inspired me to go into a contemplative and prayerful disposition. Our sixth historic church is the Archdiocese and Shrine of Our Lady of Kaisasai in Taal Heritage Town, Batangas Province. It was built in 1611 and was renovated in 1639 to 1640 after it was damaged by an eruption of the Al Volcano. It is made of coral, stones and adobe, and one interesting trivia is that the road beside it used to be part of the Pansipit River and so residents used to ride small boats to go to church. At the time I visited the church in early 2021, I could see the damage it suffered from the eruption of the Al Volcano in 2020.
The church houses the miraculous image of Our Lady of Kaisasai, which was found by a fisherman in 1603. The image is linked to a series of apparitions by the Blessed Virgin Mary that were documented from 1611 to 1639. And these are believed to be the first recorded Marian apparitions in the Philippines. Near the church is the well of St. Lucy, which is where two girls found the miraculous image after it went missing and where the public devotion to Our Lady of Kaisasai was initially centered. Miracles and healing are attributed to the waters of the spring coming from the well. This place is special to me because this is where I found healing after I went through a challenging event in my professional life. Our seventh and final historic church is the Our Lady of the Gate Parish Church in Daraga, Albay Province, facing the iconic Mayon Volcano. The church was built by the Franciscans in 1773. The facade and its walls are made of volcanic rocks, and the white highlights in its facade are the result of a coating of lime for protection from deterioration. After the strongest eruption of Mayon Volcano, buried the nearby town of Kagsawa and its church on February 1, 1814. The residents of that town relocated to Daraga and thus became parishioners of this parish church. This church is known for its churigoresque architectural style, which is a fine example of Baroque architecture. The National Historical Commission of the Philippines unveiled the church's historical marker on October 16, 2008 and the National Museum of the Philippines listed the church's eastern and western facade, belfry, and baptistry as a national cultural treasure in 2007. I find this to be one of the most beautiful churches I have ever visited in the Philippines. Not just because of its beautiful architecture and splendid view of Mayon Volcano, but also because of its mythical ambience. I cast all my cares upon you I lay all of my burdens down at your feet And any time I don't know what I will cast all my cares upon you That wraps up this Visita Iglesia special. I hope it gave you a few ideas on interesting and historic churches to visit this Lenten season. And I look forward to seeing you on my next adventure.